Hey everyone, today I'm going to take a look at the 2020 MacBook Air. This is very similar to the 2019 model with a few performance upgrades. Probably the most notable change being the keyboard, which I'm sure a lot of you are interested in. I've been using this for about a month now, but I did film the unboxing, so let's get through that and we'll get to the review afterwards. So obviously this is packaged up quite nicely. And one of the things I liked most about the way that everything was packaged up was all the peel away plastic. It was actually quite easy to unwrap each component. Other than that, it's pretty standard Mac packaging. You have your laptop on top, the chargers underneath with a little bit of paperwork. All right, so onto the machine itself. This particular model that I have retails at $12.99 US and comes with a 1.1 gigahertz i5 quad core CPU with turbo boost up to 3.5 gigahertz. It has eight gigs of 3733 megahertz RAM and a 512 gig SSD. Now you can get a cheaper option that starts at 999, but it's going to come with a little bit less powerful i3 CPU and a 256 gig SSD, which is nice considering the bottom tier MacBooks in the past have come with 128 gigs. So this is probably a decent option if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper that you just wanna use casually for web browsing and things like that. I'm doing more work related and development tasks. So the little extra boost in performance makes a big difference for me. So let's start off looking at the design. So not too much has changed in the overall look from the 2019 model. And it's actually quite similar to the 13 inch MacBook Pro that I was previously using. You have an aluminum chassis. This machine is space gray, but you can also get it in rose gold and silver. You have a nice large force touch trackpad that's just a hair smaller than the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Two USB Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. The speaker is on each side of the keyboard and obviously the biggest change design wise is the keyboard. It's relatively the same as the new MacBook Pros that just came out. Obviously this model doesn't have the touch bar, but otherwise it's very similar. So they've got rid of the butterfly keyboard and moved back to a scissor style key switch similar to the ones that were on the pre 2016 MacBooks. The key travel is around one millimeter. So the butterfly switches were around 0.5 millimeters and the old MacBooks were around 1.5. So you're kind of right in the middle range there. And just pressing the keys feels very similar to the pre 2016 machines. The arrow keys have also moved back to the inverted T style. This keyboard feels so much nicer to type on than the butterfly keyboard and the subtle layout changes really improve the overall feel. The power button that sits in the upper right corner doubles as the Touch ID, and that works amazing, far better than any PC laptops with fingerprint scanners that I've used. And the bezel around the display is fairly narrow. Speaking of which, let's actually take a look at the display. The screen on this machine is fantastic. You get a 13.3 inch retina display, with a 1610 aspect ratio and 2560 by 1600 resolution. Uh, this is an IPS LED panel. It does not have HDR support and we're not looking at any kind of OLED panel or anything, not something that you would expect at this price. It does have True Tone, which will adjust the white balance of the picture to match your lighting in the room. And it seems to work pretty well. You might not notice it if you just leave it on all the time, but once you turn it off, you can really see the difference it makes. The screen gets very bright and produces decent color. Again, for this price, it's just really nice to have a retina display. So really no complaints on that front. Now, as far as performance goes, it's not going to perform like a super high-end PC does or the $2,000 MacBooks. 
But so far, I've noticed it seems to work a lot better than my 2017 MacBook Pro. For basic everyday tasks and even doing some application development, I haven't noticed any major lag or decrease in performance while running Xcode with browser tabs open, with a few other apps like Spotify and Slack running. Even while having my 4K monitor plugged in, the only time it really seems to be under any stress so far has been when I build an Xcode, sometimes the fan will spin up a little bit. And if I'm doing something really GPU heavy like 3D work in Blender, you'll hear the fan really start to kick in. If you're looking for something to play games on or do tasks that use a lot of system resources, maybe doing 4K video work or something of that nature, this probably won't be enough machine for you, but otherwise I'd say it's great performance wise. Moving on to the sound, we have these two speakers beside the keyboard and it gets surprisingly loud. Uh, the audio quality doesn't degrade at full volume. There is no rattling around or anything. It sounds very crisp and clear. Obviously, it's not going to get super bassy or anything like that with such small speakers, but for a laptop, I would say they're doing a pretty good job. Finally, we look at the battery life. So this model should last you well over a day if you're just using it for simple tasks like browsing, provided you don't have the sound and the screen brightness cranked all the way up. If you're like me and you're using it for web or mobile development, I would say it can get close to a full workday, probably hovering around seven hours use or so, if you don't have a whole bunch of resource heavy processes running. It comes with a 30 watt wall charger and takes just over three hours to fully charge it when plugged in on a low battery. I find that for a workday, it works quite well to start off with a full charge and then just plug it in around lunchtime or so if you can. And when you come back, you should be good for the rest of the day. So lastly, there are a few downsides that I would like to mention. For me, Bluetooth still has issues that seem to exist on most Macs that I've owned in the past. If you're using a Bluetooth headset, often the sound quality degrades unless you switch the setting and the sound preferences from using a headset mic to the internal mic. This grainy sound will often occur on its own, but it can pop up in a few instances in particular that I've noticed. Like when there's a sound being played from the device simulator, if you're doing iOS development, or sometimes when you enter video chats and things like that. And speaking of video chat, the technical term for the webcam on this machine, I believe it is called a potato. Uh, it's a 720p camera. It does not look good at all. Uh, for a company who also manufactures phones with great cameras, I don't really understand why we can't even get a half decent camera in here. If you're looking for something with a good webcam, this is not it. Another thing I'm not a huge fan of is only having two ports on the side. Uh, this can make sense for some people who have gone completely wireless, but personally, I still have to do things like plug in external monitors, plug in a power cable, maybe connect a device to run a test build on for apps, uh, plug in SD cards and so on. So if that is an issue for you, I recommend getting a passive power USB hub. I'll leave a link in the description for the one that I currently use. It works great and I haven't had any issues so far with it. And the last real issue that I've had so far with this machine is connecting to an external display. I'm using a USB-C to display port cable and it seems to have trouble sometimes remembering preferences when I plug the monitor in. Sometimes it will extend the display so I have two screens present. Sometimes it will make the laptop screen black and just use the 4K as the primary display. And once in a while when unplugging the monitor, the laptop screen will just remain black and I'll have to fiddle with it for a while for it to come back on. This only happens occasionally and I've never really found MacBooks to be great at handling external displays in the first place. Um, it's not a deal breaker, it's more of an annoyance, but just something to be aware of. Overall, I'm really liking this machine so far. For the price, it's really hard to beat these specs. And the keyboard makes this much more usable than machines that I've previously had. I've noticed less fan noise than my 2017 Pro, 
And besides the few issues that I mentioned earlier, I've really had no other issues with this machine at all. If you're a web developer or a mobile developer, designer, photographer, I definitely think this is a great choice, especially if you can't spend $2,000 on a decent machine. And as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section down below. I know this can be a fairly big purchase for some people, so I'm happy to answer any questions if I'm able to. Again, I'll leave some links down below under the like button to a few items that I use with my MacBook, so you can check that out. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.